Hey guys, let's talk about popper. So popper is when you play with commons, and that means a lot of these commons that are older are in top decks, or perhaps are in decks that are being promoted by YouTubers, will go up in price. Now the interesting part about this is that they are commons and they can be reprinted anytime in any set. So it's not like the reserve list, it's not even like old cards, which are more difficult to print, it is commons. So we have something called Standard Bearer, and this is from Apocalypse. It has hit $10 as of the recording. The foil is $21. This is a card that was worth 10 cents recently, featured in a certain deck, and now it is $10. What's happening here is the same concept as why people want Frontier, Tiny Leaders to do well. It's going to spike cards. If I had to guess who was the biggest holder of Standard Bearer, I would say Channel Fireball or Star City Games or Card Kingdom. So having these popper events, actually, it's kind of like crazy, right? So when you think about popper, you think about cheap format. But the more people who play this cheap format, the more expensive it gets. So the more popular it becomes, the more players you can play with, which is great. And that's what any format would want. But man, it is, uh, it is shocking that it's $10 for a common that was $0.10. Cents. Uh, even this one from Judgment. These are not like amazing cards, but in Popper, they are pretty good. This one is now... $2, $20 foil. So the foil ones are the real price. That's where you want to see the price. It's just interesting to see cards that were featured in Tolarian Community College videos and the cards not and then see what happens. There is a reason Channel Fireball is flying him to different events, popper events. They can sell popper. They can sell commons. I would not be surprised if they were selling commons at these G GPs now, especially popper staples. It's the next big format. And I actually think it's a legit format. So unlike Tiny Leaders and Frontier, which were mainly made, in my opinion, to sell cards, this one is a legit format, but you have the irony, and it is very rich irony indeed, where the more people who play the format and the more popular it becomes, the more expensive the cards will be, therefore defeating whole purpose of Popper. So the purpose of Popper, I mean, when you talk about like people pimping out their decks with Popper decks, it is kind of funny and also kind of sad because I know individualism and people don't want me to talk about, oh, how people should buy cards and sleeves and deck boxes. We never had those growing up and we loved the game, I think, just fine. We enjoyed playing the game with our penny sleeves, and most of us didn't have penny sleeves. None of us had deck boxes. We have rubber bands. Like, I'm not kidding you. That's how we played. And we had a good time. We had a good time. So, Popper is an interesting format, very similar to ED8s, but kind of more competitive. And the main selling point is it is cheap. I own 200 of these gorillas, and that is uh, insane because this is a common from Alliance. And Alliance was not, like when you look at it and you open a pack of Alliance, like what common today is worth $2? Like can you name a common today worth $2 non-foil? It would be very difficult to name like more than 10 of them. But back in the day, like this opening a pack and having a $2 common, that's a really f fantastic expected value. And the people who are going to benefit from this the most are people who have bulk. I always I said for the last year is that I'm not interested in buying and selling individual cards. I know you guys like that because it makes it your life simple. I'm very interested in bulk, and this is why. I'm not sure what card's going to go up in Alliance, but I'm sure something is going to go up. Alliance has reserve list. It has Lake of the Dead. It has a million of these gorillas, gorilla shamans, and one day, oh. Look at this card. It's on the reserve list, and it's at 100 bucks. Uh, you think I'm kidding, but I am not kidding because Weatherlight... Mirage is one of my favorite. I don't know what it is, but Mirage has a ton of just really bad cards on the reserve list where if you buy in bulk, you get a few hundred copies of it, and no one really cares. Then one day, there's 
Oh, I'm not talking about reserve. There's that pirate dude. I don't think the pirate's on the reserve list, but this is an even better example. And the pirate dude one day becomes five bucks. And you're just like, from Mirage, you're like, wow, this card was five cents yesterday. Now it's five bucks. Fantastic. All right, even the dual decks. Like, this is the funny, funny part about, like, Popper is just the most random stuff is going up in price. Like, the dual deck Nature's Lore is five bucks. The whole dual deck, I think that's Garouk versus Liliana. I mean, used to be a bad value, but when you have a $5 common, correct me if I'm wrong, there might be multiple Nature Lords in the Lily versus. I mean, if there's multiple, if there's four, probably not four, maybe two, then you're looking at $10 of a $20 MSRP dual deck. Rest in peace, dual decks, by the way. Pretty good. I mean, I mean, it's guaranteed value. Why would anyone complain about it? So when you're talking about all these opportunities and all these things, I think Popper is huge. But it's not just Popper. It's the fact that you need to get bulk of these old cards. Bulk new cards are totally worthless. I'm not going to lie to you and say that anyone would ever want them. No one wants bulk new cards. I don't want them. No one should want them. Bulk old cards, especially cards that have, mm, I would say, uh, Urza's Legacy, Urza's Saga, Urza's 7th Editions, kind of, but, I mean, the foils. If you can get bulk foils, yeah, I mean, you're looking at Torment and Odor, which you're looking very recent sets being okay. Even something like uh, New Frexa foils would be okay. But if you're looking at just raw bulk, I would say there's two types. There's New Frexa and Odor, which is okay. And even Innistrad's kind of meh. And then the one that you really want is you want that old school player who has alpha beta card. I mean, you want that. That's the gold mine. But if you can't get the alpha beta, unlimited, uh, unlimited is good. Like Blaze of Glory is like a $40 unlimited card. I, I was just like, wow, that card sucks. But okay, 40 bucks. And even revised. Like I hate to say revised because so much of it was printed. Revised was like our first crop. It was like the first um, time that like we could get buy cards on mass, like where they were available in Radio Shacks. Just like I think nationwide, I assume, because I, I lived in Pennsylvania and I didn't see them. And uh, they were also in Game Stops and things of that nature. So that they were pushing out a lot of revised. Was it revised? I don't know. I think I know they pushed out. I know GameStop had Urza Saga and they were pushing that out like crazy. And the Radio Shack and Urza Saga as well. But even something like M10, which, wow, that's eight, it's eight years ago, if you can believe it. Oh, seven or eight years ago, wow. Uh, M10 is now has a common worth about three to four bucks, two to four bucks. So, I mean, when your common can pay back the pack, and M10 packs are cheap as anything, that's not bad. So I like Popper. I like the fact that Tolarian is supporting it because whatever he supports will be the most popular format. If Tolarian said Tiny Leaders was incredible and he started making Tiny Leaders decks like he's making Popper, yeah, it would have been the format. I truly believe that. Now, Popper, huh? Hmm. I think there's real money in there. If you do it correctly, that's where MTG Finance never dies. It just changes. In the very beginning, it was sharking people. It was like, hey, this Apple stock is really worth $20, but the person doesn't know how much it's worth, and there's no internet access, there's no smartphones, and no data plans. Let me see if I can get him to give it to me for five. And of course, you're going to make money that way because you just bought something, you just traded something that was 20 for five. That's why you always had the meme, what do you value this at? Price? Price? And you always had uh, value traders like that. Then we went on to the speculation where people would just buy random cards and it would always go up because modern was like exploding. You could pick any modern card, modern playable card, Goblin Guide, Fetch Land, whatever, Lily, and it would have just double, triple, quadrupled in price and you didn't have to be a genius. And that's how a lot of these MTG finance people made their name during this time period. Now we're in a time period where all I want is bulk. I'm gonna show you a video where I have made so much money from Tolarian Community College spiking cards. And it's quite impressive. I own 200 copies of this card called Distant Melodies from, I want to say like, Lorwyn, but no, Lorwyn, Shadow, Mor e Morning Tide, Morning Tide. It's from Morning Tide. 
And I own the Merfolk dude that got that makes wizards like cheaper. Wizards and Merfolk's one cheaper. I own because I have so much of that. So I own hundreds of copies of those two. And I have a ton of these as well. Because when you buy old when you just have so much I mean, this is not by design. I'm not gonna stand here and say I'm a super genius because it didn't happen this way. What happened was I couldn't sell them. I actively was trying to sell these cards, but no one would buy them, and I had to hold them in storage, and then suddenly, boom. Lots of money. Anyway, bye guys.